All right, so welcome back to another Unstoppable Recap. Unstoppable may have an awesome, vibrant one for you today. This lady was talking about her husband, a Jamaica. Oh, she said, the man feel like him entitled to her money and entitled to her for do things for him. And whenever she not do it, it's always an attitude. And she even explained that, yo, she at the end of the day, she just decided, yo, yeah, I'm going to stop the paperwork. Because she find out certain things. She said she used to buy up all kind of things to the man and in the end the man baby mother burn up all the clothes them where she buy fever and family it went into a whole lot of saga. Take a listen to this one that was shared on Unstoppable Life. I first of all I've known this man from I was a kid growing up. We grew up in the same community. So I migrated here. To the United States, and um, after I divorced my husband, I moved to a different state and lived here for a while. And then I decided, okay, I'm gonna get in touch with this guy because he seemed like back then was a humble guy. I thought I knew him well, okay. So I got in touch with him, and we were talking on the phone. And then marriage came in place. You know, I wanted to do a big wedding. And his brother-in-law said to me, don't do anything big. Just go down, marry him, and come back up instead of having this big wedding, so, which I did. I went down, I got married, and I came back up. After I came up, um, I, within two months after being married to him, I petitioned for him and his two younger kids. Okay? But I realized months into it, I realized he was very disrespectful. What led up to the wedding? I, I'm here and I'm lonely because I've married to, to my husband for 10 years. And then we divorced. So I was lonely living with just my two younger kids at the time because my older kids are on their own, mm -hmm. you know. So I just wanted a companion. It's not like I'm looking somebody for sex or for money because I'm a worker addict. I work two jobs constantly. If you ever would know anybody that worked in the nursing field, we were very hard, you know. So it's not about money. It was just somebody, companionship, somebody that, you know, you can share some special thought with special moment, you know. So I went down and I married him. But I think that leaving my ex-husband, I was just looking some closure. Mm -hmm. So I get caught up in a trap in doing that, you know. So I went to Jamaica, and of course when I went to Jamaica, he didn't have anything, you know. All he had before I got to Jamaica was 30,000 Jamaican dollars. By the time he gave his kids uh, money out of that, he said he only have $8,000. And I said, okay, no problem, you know. So he even borrowed tools from my one of my cousins to build whatever he's doing for a living. And... He, um, there was an issue with him and my family member over the tool. So I sent to him, don't worry, give him back his tool. And now when I go back, I will send you some money and you could buy yourself two pieces of tool where you could continue with your work, you know? So I went down, when I got there, he ended up, oh, oh my family member, 5,000 Jamaican dollars, which he didn't have. At that time, I landed on a Sunday. So I didn't have any um, Jamaican currency at that time. So I borrowed $5,000 from his mom to pay my cousin because I didn't want a scandal, you know, because my cousin was going to come there with a scandal big Sunday morning. So I said, no, this is embarrassing. So I paid the money. One of his kids had stuff on their skin and he didn't have the money to send the kid to the doctor either. So I give him the money. To give the baby mother to take the kid to the doctor because I'm a parent, I'm a mom, you know, and I know sometimes what poverty is and when your kid's sick and you don't have the money to take care of them. So I give him the money and he send the kid to the doctor and the kid get some antibiotics and they take care of that, you know. Anyway, we're there and things seem nice, he seems very loving, everything. But before I marry him, one of my family members said to me, you don't think he's marrying you for opportunity? And, and, and you know, I just blow it up because like I said, he's somebody that I knew. I thought I knew very well back then. So I didn't expect 
what I receive from him on the other end. You know, so I just blow that off to the point where I didn't even invite my family to the wedding. You know, it was just me and a couple of his family members and my daughter that's living there. And we, and we got married. We, I came back to the United States now and we go continue. Now, my oldest daughter still lives there because of her age. It's kind of tough getting her here at the time. So she lived from one place to the next, to the next, to the next. And as a mom, again, it's very depressing for me to be here. This day, everything good. The next minute, oh, mom, they say I can't stay here no more. I have to leave, you know. I ended up, when my, sis, my daughter was living with him after I came back to the United States for a while. But it wasn't his house, it was his sister's house. And his sister said he, she didn't want my daughter there, okay? So my daughter had to leave. His mom offered to let my daughter stay with her. It didn't end there. The same sister started turning on my daughter and started cursing my daughter and telling the mother that she needed to kick my daughter out, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I ended up rent a place for my daughter. So why is it that when your I sister, why, the is, home, why is it that the sister huh? didn't like your daughter? What, what was wrong there? Because the sister wanted me to rent the house from her, rent her one of the rooms for my daughter. Mm. But what he was saying at the time, it's not a good look because it looks like now they are living off me. You know? Your anyway, husband was I saying tell that. my daughter, huh? Your husband was saying that? Yes. It looks like it's a, they're using me if, if I'm going to pay the rent for my daughter to live there while he's living there and taking care of the house. Mm. Because he said that my daughter is like his daughter now pretty much right. so it's not it it's not a good look so if my daughter can be there she's not gonna be stay there so anyway i tell my daughter to leave so she leave and was living with the mother for a while and i rented an apartment for my daughter to live now it's a long, long story my daughter took in a family member that we couldn't find and because of the family member my daughter get kicked out of the rented apartment that she was living because the landlord said my daughter didn't consult with him to get to take in somebody else so my daughter ended up leave you know based on the, the, the way the situation so stressful for me as again as a mom i he had an, a property so i said you know what i was gonna buy a piece of land in jamaica and build something or something but then i said you know what a family member said to me, why don't you just build something on his property since you guys are married and then your daughter can live there even if it's one room until she come because you already filed for her. So, okay, I thought about it for a while and then I said, you know what? That seems like a good idea. So I called him and I said, you know, I'm going to send you some money to build a room where my daughter can live. This way I can stay here, work, and I don't have to be stressed out wondering when she's going to kick out again. Or somebody might call me and say somebody hurt her because she ended up in a desperate position, you know. So I sent, um, the first money I sent was 3000 US dollars. I said to him, get the men, them dig out the ex um, foundation for the house. Okay. I sent that and... Because my daughter is living right across from where the property is, he did that, okay? And I continue to send like $3,000, $2,000, but you know what? You can send it one time based on the system. So I sent it and it ended up to a million and change that I sent. One day my daughter called me and my daughter said, Mom, I hear him telling his mother that he doesn't have any more money to continue with the house. My, granted, I'm here a long time, but I ain't stupid. I know material couldn't be that expensive where you couldn't put it out to get the, the roof deck and all of that. So um, I called him and I said to him, I didn't make him know any wiser because my daughter said, Mom, don't say anything to him because at that time my daughter was still living with the mom. So everything happened and they said, and my daughter would tell me, they said my daughter talked to me, so I have to hold it. One day I was talking to his mom, and his mom said to me, Here, send by one truck. I said, What? 
Okay, I could have waited until the conversation end to call him and ask him about that because I know now that he don't have any money to buy a truck. And before he bought the truck, he keeps saying that, you know, I want a truck, I want a truck, because if I get a truck, I can be able to sell, um, deliver my goods easy without having to rent people vehicle to go deliver and pay $8,000, $10,000. I said to him, Wait until next year when we build a house and the, at least my daughter can live in there, then we can move forward in the truck. I said, go and see how much it co- a truck costs. And he went and he sent me a picture of a truck that he wanted. At this time, he was so dishonest, he did not tell me that he already bought a truck and how he got came by buying the truck. So when I... When his mother said that he, she heard that he bought a truck, I called him just as we came off the phone. I said, your mom told me that you buy a truck. Where you get money from? Me borrow it from out of where you're saying. Me say, who lends you it? Me say, who lends you it? He couldn't answer like cat getting tongue. Me say, who mm. lends you it? He still couldn't answer. Me say, you're a thief. I said, you're a thief because you didn't borrow it from me. I didn't give you consent to borrow my money. And I said, moreover, my daughter is living down there. You see what I'm going through with my daughter? Mm-hmm. If you were a father figure, you would have built the room, at least one room that my daughter lives there and give me peace of mind that I can be here and I work and function. I said, I, I imagine you buy that truck and you keep saying that you want the truck, you want the truck. And at this time, you don't tell me that you already bought the truck when I said to you, wait until the following year, I send the, mo- the money and you buy the truck. No, this was, this was so, how long, this was how long after y'all been married now? Less than a year. Mm. Less than a year. It wasn't even a year. You know? Anyway, because we're married, I said, you know what? Let me kind of see what he's up to. And he said to me, oh, you know, I buy the truck. Because, you know, I don't have any money. That's me can't help you if you build the house, blah, blah, blah. Me say you don't build yourself off a woman. A real man don't build himself off a woman. A real man build himself on him own. Me say it seems like you're married to me because me the America. And you think to me rich. You understand? Me say you don't know what me go through to work my money. And me can't take it. This one, that noggin, noggin, you know. Me can't take the noggin. Because every day you come, you come, no, no, me want money. Me say, look here, I never take anything from you. I never take anything from you. I never borrow anything from you. I never beg you anything. And I say, I live in America, and me not beg and borrow from nobody. My sister lives five minutes away from me, and not even she. Me ask for me work, me two job, and do my thing and take care of myself and my kids them. Anyway, it not stop there, so. Me I go on with him same way, I go on with him same way. One day, me de here, and me get a phone call. When me get the phone call, this person said to me, say, um, are you so-and-so wife? I said, yes. And the person said, I want you, I would like your work address. I said, what is this phone call about? She said, um, your husband came borrowing a loan, and I would like, your work address. I said, ma'am, I do not want to be a part of this. Please take me out of it. Please take me out of it. Because this man did not tell me that he's even going to borrow any money. You understand? And she hung up. Me hung up for an hour. But why them didn't need your information for him borrowing a loan though? I have no idea up until this day. I have no idea. Anyway, I went to Jamaica because I said, I'm going to Jamaica to confront him. When I went to Jamaica, I said to him, why would you go in around borrowing money and trying to attach my name to a loan that you're borrowing? The man speak about it so casually. Me get the money, though. At this time, what he didn't know, he was planting all these seeds in my head and they were growing because I said, God, if this is not the right man for me, show me a sign. Because the only reason why I go to Jamaica and marry a man down there in the first place was because I think I knew him well. But surprisingly, I did not.
because like I said, it was somebody who grew up in the community with us and know a little about his family background. Otherwise, I would not have gone to the Jamaica and just marry a man like that. Never, ever. You know? One day, he's here there, and he's talking to me. And he said, his sister, tell him that um, no good man in the America. I said, stop talk foolishness. I said, stop talk foolishness. Good man is everywhere, and bad men are everywhere. So stop talk nonsense. And then he began to say, you know, my father tell me, say, when me I married one woman, me if married a woman will love me more than how me love her. Me say what? I say you know what your daddy dead and gone. Me say bury that with your daddy. Because in a this modern world where you might think them there's something that happen again. And me say you might see me come to Jamaica and marry to you and you might tease you out of desperation. I no desperation. You understand? Me no married you for take care of my kids them. Because me okay and my pitney them okay. And the length of time when me live in America, me set my life. If me take sick, me can take care of myself. Me can live off of my labor if me take sick. So no worry with that. So anyway, him go on and him go on same way until, you know, me, like me say, me file for him. But me and watch him behavior, and him behavior is really stinks, really, really stinks. But me and watch it and I say, you know, maybe in my turn around, me not expecting to change him whole um, self because of me. But at least adjust certain things, meet me in the middle, compromise. And that's all me, me expect of him. So me decide to me I'll go to Jamaica with the kids them. My God, Jamaica had my two youngest kids, them, and him rent this Airbnb. So, me and him have an argument in the bedroom. Wait there, let me ask you. Never want me. Let me ask you, because I know the viewers, them want to know. Him rent the Airbnb, or you rent it? Or him rent, rent it, and it. you pay a fee? Because I want to know. No, him rent it. And him pay a fee too? Time. And him pay a fee. Okay, it. then. All right. You All understand? Right. Continue. And so I said, okay, because when we go down, I always rent a hotel. Mm -hmm. So he said, him we rent that um, pay fee. So I said, okay, and it, it was cheaper than the hotel where I rent. And so since I try to prove himself, mm -hmm. he's him a good man and he wants to play a role as a man, I give him that one. So I rent it and me and my kids them go down. When we go down, me and him have an argument in the bedroom. So, I don't want my kids to hear the argument, you know. So, I get up out of the bedroom and go in the living room. In big son and my big daughter sit down in the living room. I go out in the living room. The man come out of the bedroom in the living room, lay down on the sofa like he thinks there's something good in my do. And he start the argument in the and licking and down on the floor and carry on. That time, my kids then feet away in the bedroom from us. So I said, oh my God, I was so embarrassed because I never want my kids to see or uh, hear something like that. So I walk out on the veranda and sit down on the veranda and I start to cry. And I said to myself, so where this me really put myself in? You understand? Because I've been through them situations before. I don't want to go back there. So the guy where we rent the place from, him hear the argument because he was standing outside. And the guy said to me, so you filed for him already? I said, no. At this time, I felt for me because I never want people to know my business. I tell the guy, no. The guy said to me, to me say, you must know, you know. Because look how you far from your left from. Come look for this man and marry this man. Some man don't know what they have. Exactly. You have gold spoon in my mouth. Exactly. And the man said, the man said to me, say, nobody no count him about you, you know. Nobody <laughs> no count him about you. Because he don't know if he deal with people. Anyway, I kind of blew it up, you know. So then, him come and he say, him a carrier this donkey race. Well, me never interested in the donkey race, but he might try to make up things to, back to me because his son talked to him. And we got the donkey race. And then we come back home and we did it. But at this time, we saw everything are coming on my mind. And I say, you know, I might as well just book a one-way ticket. Me and my kids and just get back up. But then, me I say, you know, uh, me have to be careful and think how oh, I get back out of this. So, let me just humble and chill and just spend my time down there and leave because I don't want nobody to do me anything or my kids them. So we come back up. So when we come back up, my kids then said, my daughter said, very outspoken little girl. She said, Mom, I don't like him. I don't like him. The way he speaks to you, I don't like him, Mom. You know? So my older kids them hear the story. 
And the one we live in the same era when we live in the United States. He said, Mom, let me tell you something. If you take this man, yes, sir, and him feel like he can mistreat you, me I come and me I come put him out myself. I'm in a business where you want to me I put him out. My son went in the military. He called me and he said, Mom, you know I love you. And I love my sibling them. And if anybody do you guys anything, including that man, I'm a pull up. And I'm not playing, ma'am. You know? Anyway, my son didn't hear a voice me no, note with him. And my son said to me, said, Mom, you're gone back in the same thing again. You hmm. might as well did stay with the kids, them father. Hmm. Because as bad as thing is, you and him in the pay bills together. This man you know, do nothing for you, you are helping. You know? My brother in law talked to him one day because my brother in law hear him. And he looked for him, he, 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 my brother, talk to my brother and tell my brother in law over the phone, say, like he said, But John, Carola, Carola, Jamaican. So my brother in law turned to him and said to him, say, What does that have to do with Jamaican? What does that have to do, do, do with Jamaican? He said, They're my woman over there. Yes, my brother, they're independent. They're not put up with them, I kind of stop me here. And him turned to my brother and I said, My youth, you see that my woman you nowadays, you have to pull on your foot. Mr. Put on your foot for what? Mr. Put on your foot for what? I'm a grown woman, you have two little pitney them, and the youngest one is so much so troubled. And you now put on your foot for my me, big woman, you want to put on your foot for me? Mr. A liar tell. Because I say, if you come to America and feel so you can't put your foot down for me, like how you probably don't get put your foot down for a woman, a prison may send you back yourself, and you go back to the yard. So I didn't think I'd joke, and I'd go on and see me, and I'd go on and see me, you know? So, I did it, and, you know, I try again to kind of just ease it, but I don't all of these things I keep in my head, see me, and I say, God, if this is not the right man for me, I'm asking you to show me a sign because I'd rather be alone than a man coming at my house and mistreat me. I'd rather be alone than if you take up a, a, a woman turning at my house and if you see him get handcuffed and go to jail because he not treat me good. He, he might as well stay in the country. At this time, immigration don't approve him paper yet. So, one, uh, one day, I say, you know what? Let me email immigration and so immigration are going with them papers so me email immigration and when me email them they, they write me back and say they want certain documents from me you understand so me send out the documents then go give them right as me send out the documents and then give them with the, with, and then get it within maybe a month or two them approved in paperwork so me call them and me say they approve your paperwork enough for your kids them you know so, them said to me, say, them, me will hear from them within like a month. Well, during that time, the, 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 the president locked down the country. So, me never hear from them until the January. When me hear from them, they said they want their visa application. Me go ahead and me do their visa application for them. I send it in. I call him and I say, I send in a visa application. In. No, not true. But we again, because I'm behavior, me decide say, you know what? Me no want to send in a man a visa application in. and then this man come to America and I start treating me bad. Because no in behavior kind of make me feel threatened. And I say to him, I say, you kind of behavior really make me feel threatened. You know? And me no want that because verbal abuse becomes physical abuse. I said to her, he do you know that what you are doing is abuse? When you argue with me like that? He said, no. I said, what do you classify as abuse? He said, when man beat a man. I said, okay. So you don't know about verbal abuse and emotional abuse. You don't know about that? He said, no. He thinks that when man beat a man. I said, oh, that's why you are being so because you consider your behavior as abuse. Him say him never know that. I say, okay. Okay, I say, well, you need to fix certain things because the way you talk to me and I behave, that is not appropriate. I mean, now I bring you around me picking them and behave so. You understand? Because I'm not going to make me pick them grow up and feel like, say, 
this behavior is okay. Because I said the same thing, make me move out and left them father, buy a one way ticket from one state to the next state and left them father and leave everything behind me. Me leave clothes, suitcases, everything behind me. All we come to this state with was three suitcases and two bags for them back. You understand? So me now go deal with that and that was their father. And can tell you one thing, that man love his kids them endless in the regard of how I do in loving kids them and that's how the kids then love him back. So let me ask you, you a question. Them? Let me ask you a question, Carla. So mm-hmm. your kids at this point, before you, you do the filing thing for him now, already done sister things never either go too right between you and him, right? Yes. How did they feel when they realize that you still go through with the filing process? You did tell them how you do it behind them back. Me tell them they know about it, but my kids them is the kind of kids them we kind of stand off a little while and watch what go on. But even when they're not okay with it, because they don't want to offend me. Because one of them say, "Mom, you know what? I can't tell you who to love, but I don't like him." Mm. That's what my kids said to me. I can't tell you who to love, but I don't like him. And like I said, they all said if he, he come here and start act a fool. They go and come here and kick him out of the house. You know? So anyway, I think about it and I say I don't want my kids because my kids them um, at that when I was living to Jamaica, they watched me get mistreated. So they said, they said to me, say, him thinks so when you do Jamaica and man, I do your things and we lick a bit, we no lick again. I'm I shot me, I just five four. My kids, one of my kids are six two. The other one are five nine, my two boy them, then tall. You understand? Then the shot like me. So then said, the can come and come deal with it like that and feel them out, get away with it. You understand? Because me must see here because me have one little daughter in here. We make them know exactly what's going on. You know? Even my ex-husband, we have a very good relationship going. That man say, anyhow, him, you take him here, so, and he come here and mistreat you. Me I come down there personally for him because guess what? Regardless of where we are, where we did live together, we don't live no more, but me cheer about you 100% because I know you're a good woman and you're kind hearted. Him now go come here so and feel like thank you, I mistreat you because you live by yourself and you feel like say you don't have no money. And in Jamaica, this. You know? So, anyway, that was that. So, me decide say it will go close to a year now. So, make me put in. For him, um, visa to come. So I put it in for him and his kids them, and they approve a visa application, and him end up getting the to go embassy with him and his two kids them, and him go embassy. When him go embassy, um, he want one more piece of paper. But before that, we go down in October. And when we go down in October, I realize I'm asleep with somebody. So I go to him interview and stuff. But before that, I um, go down to Jamaica October because I go like twice a year. You know, so I go down to Jamaica October. And when I go down there, I said to him, I want to see his son because the two of them are two di- different moms. So I said, I want to pick up the little son and bring him up to my grandma and I can spend some time with him and then go back to Ocho Rios where I always stay. So we did. But before that, he introduced me to that specific, specific, specific kid's mom. There was something about that mom that was, didn't sit well with me, you know? And I said to him one day, I said, you know what? You need to figure out how you're going to let your kids get child support without seeing this woman because this woman is problem. Him said to me, but we have kids together. We have to talk. Me say, uh-uh. It don't work like that. You can have kids together. You still see a kid and take care of your kids without you and somebody like that talk because the woman crazy. Anyway, we went down to her house and he get the kid. We went back. At this time, I didn't know that that woman was going to his home. Okay? So the woman didn't come out. She stayed behind the fence. So then I realized now that the woman been going to his house because somebody, twice, two people tell me and say, I know you didn't know. You understand? But when you come down here, 
him hide the woman now. When you're gone, the woman gone back. Go back to him home. So me always, every time I go down, I buy stuff, carry go give him. Shoes, clothes. The last time I was going down, which was February, I did not bring anything to him for him because I know he was going to come up. Lo and behold, when I was at the hotel, he bring his clothes there. When he bring the bag with the clothes, I said, where your clothes? Where are your clothes then? He said, um, uncle that him have. Because I always make him get away with stuff. He feel like saying, I go always get away with stuff. But me know me myself. I know there comes a time when I go just meet my, meet, get to the end of my rope and just decide to, you know, forget about you. So then you say, backside, you know, see other girl, they burn up my clothes, them do. Me saw which girl? His son, mother. Me saw what? Me say, you know, how oh, hard me have to work in a school. Me buy them a clothes that can't come to you. Me say, sometimes me do double so till me tired. Some days I'll five straight day double me and do. People have said to me, say, how you do it? One day me there work, and me a talk, and me say, me a 50 years old, and one of the guys there work said to me, say, what? You are 50? Me say, yes, I'm 50 years old. The guy say, you don't act like 50? You don't even walk like 50? I thought you was in your 30s. I said, no, sir. I, I go home, I get my rest, and I come back to work. Some days, five days, doubles. Anyway, I didn't argue him when I was down there much, because I don't want no man come do me anything in Jamaica. You know? So I come back up and I say to him, listen now, you need to lock her up. You need to lock her up for the destruction of property. And if you can't lock her up, me I go let her right there, so. Do you want a word cloud the man? Because I can't bother, I can't bother. Every day I come knock now, me do you want to? I say, okay. And that's that is his famous line. Do what I want to. I tell him, so you need to stop telling me if you do what I want to do because you don't even know me yet. Because you continue to tell me if you do what I want to do until I go do what I have to do. You understand? Because I say, me, me tell you something again in your mind, you feel like, say, me desperately want you more or oh, you want me. I say, I'm not saying that I don't love you, but guess what? I mean, I love you more than myself, regardless of what you do. You understand? Me even said to him one day, I say, let me tell you something. I don't love you the way I used to love you. You understand? I'm saying, ah, oh, that for me, love you like that again. You have to go work on that. You have to go do everything you can to work on it if you want a relationship. To continue, he said to me, say, when in, in, when, when in can do for me, me love him again. Mister, me can't tell you that. And you have to figure that out. Me say, me and my husband and my husband tell me, say, no love me no more. Me know exactly what to do for making love me again. Because me know what me I do. I said, first of all, you break trust. Because I said, when I send you my money to Jamaica, to come build a home, that's my pity you could have lived. And you never do it. Right there see you break trust. And you show me what kind of man you is. You understand? He look for me and say, maybe then the money or no money, you know. I said, what? I said, you have all a million dollars one time in your hand yet? He can't answer. You understand? Anyway. Carla, you know, so every time you do an impersonation of him, I laugh. Do it again, Deca. I like it. Do it give, give you another impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> every time you do the impersonation, I have a laugh. Give you another one. Give you another <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, continue, continue. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do any work one same way, you know? So anyway, that was that. I said to him, say, him called me back and him say, to me, say, me not get you, you know. No, that very day when he go embassy, me go to Jamaica. And he said to me, say, he not get you. You know, but them have him and the kids, them passport. Me say, you're good, man. You're good, you're going to get you. Once you hold your passport, you're good. You then me give me back the passport now, then that would be an issue. But when they hold the passport, you're good. Me say, I've been through that process there already. You understand? Me say, when they in the deal with my daughter, they hold on for her passport and just demand a certain document, miss any document. And within days, then call her back and tell her, say, she good. You understand? So, I just say immigration process go. So, anyway, me call him back, because I go up online and check in case status. Um, they want one more piece of document. One more piece of document. So, him, 
me realize that so me tell him say send that the I me, me document send come give me because I don't want my sensitive information getting on a body and down there. So I'm so stupid that he send the document then come and he not put me own number for the document. So I couldn't get it. So me, within 24 hours, I should get the document. He never te- he almost close to a, 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 a one week before me receive the document. Then I come here for call FedEx and give them the, the information, the host number, everything, and then deliver the document. In front of the I 4865, the affidavit of support. I call him back now. I said to him, say, Look here. Two documents missing from this, you know, I need them because I don't want my information to get on the body on. You understand? Because I say, you already have your pity, mama, you, 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 maybe I see to call my paper, then I say, you hear about identity theft? Before, 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 before you continue, before you continue, um, Frashi and ask a question, and I, I want to know as well. W- what happened to your daughter that was in Jamaica this time? Where was your daughter during all this? The one that was living there that you were trying to get the house for? My daughter end up at uh, my brother-in-law's sister's house, and God is good. October gone, my God, to me can bring up my daughter with me. That's good. All right, that's good. Last October, my daughter is here with me, so me not have no more picnic in Jamaica. All of them they are so with me. You understand? So anyway, me said to him, say, "What the document that me need? Me document them." Me no, sir, I don't you know what I say? No, me no, sir, I don't you know what I say? You do lie. You do lie. I like your tell. I like your tell. So hold on. Hold on. Calm down. Calm down. Mr. Let me tell you something. Mr. Immigration no work like you. Immigration work different. When immigration asks you for document, if immigration no get everything, you know I go to go on an interview, none of that. Until they get when they want, because they want where they want and they want it when they want it, and there's no getting around that. So, he hung up the phone for me, so I call him back. I hear when he said to somebody, say, she will come talk about it. I will send her a document and come here. She will come talk about it. So anyway, I said, okay then, Papa, you really show me who you is, because even when you keep up so much nonsense with me, and I try to get you, you're too little baby yourself. You still are going on to your way, so you, you have the sense of entitlement. I have five pitney. Me not grow my feet and if you feel like they're entitled to nothing. And me raise them by myself without a man around me. And me raise them as a woman with iron fist. Because even when me migrate, I left them in Jamaica. You see, when they don't in Jamaica and do anything, and they hear say, me I go call them a mother. I hear say, them tremble down there like leaf. Me have one 30-year-old one me kick her from Jamaica. She's still living in my house now. Not even she, when you when get me ugly. In trimble like leaf, in tap tap, because I'm run up in them as much as them tall on me and I run up in them. Guess what? Then quiet. You understand? So, I said, okay then. You show me who you is now, Papa. So I go so bam, I hang up the phone and I call immigration. And I tell immigration your situation and I say, listen, I don't want this man here, so. I'm very disrespectful and he now coming at me also and disrespect me and my kids them. So I want to stop him paperwork. So the immigration officer said to me, say, okay, I'm going to give you a number for your call. And then give me a number for call. I'm going to call the number. I'm going to call the number. The immigration officer answered and said to me, say, explain to the immigration officer what happened. And the immigration said, okay, then. It's out of her hand, though. The document is in Kingston, Jamaica. So here you what you're going to do. Everything that you are telling me, I want you to put it in writing and send it to the immig- em- U.S. Embassy in Jamaica. Because guess what? He won't be coming here. So, me write the email, me write the letter and email it to immigration in Kingston. And they receive the letter and tell me that they received the letter. No, before all of that, so, me call the sister. And me said to the sister, say, me done with him. Me now go no further with him. Me done, done, done. I divorce, me go divorce him now. So, me call the divorce lawyer. When I called the lawyer, the lawyer said to me, say, if you were willing to sign the paper. Mr. said to the lawyer, say, I don't know if you will be willing to sign the divorce paper, but what I can do is have somebody um, talk to him because I said, you know what? I'm not even going to call this to this man for him to ever disrespect me again. So 
the lawyer said, okay, go ahead and see if one of his family members will ask him if he would be willing to sign the paper because then the divorce process would go through easier. So I called his sister and asked his sister. I even advised no to her because you know in America you'll be so busy. I voice note her and tell her to ask him if he'd be willing to sign the paper. She voice note me back and said to me, say, um, you know, Christine, me not really want to get involved, you know. Me not really want to get involved, but you really hurt the kids, them. You really hurt the kids, them. Because me nae know say you not go do it. Me think you not go make him come here and when him come, you at least divorce him. I said to myself, this is a woman you must be sick of your head. This is a woman you look like you lose at school because if me I have my woman enemy, which I don't think I have no woman out there when I feel it. I don't want she to take up nobody for break her heart. This woman look like you want me to take her brother in this country and then say, eh, oh no, oh man, oh no, see me, take him, take him, take him. After me spend up my money to get him here. So, the vice you know, so she said, come give me. See, them are excited and cool and then smart on me. I just send a vice note to immigration officer to a Kingston. All right, she vibrant though. If you want to find out what happened after she sent that vice note to immigration, click the link that's in the description. It will take you on over to Unstoppable Live where you can watch the exact video in its entirety to listen to the rest of what was shared. But when you go over there, you know, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications. So once we go live over there, you will get notified and you will be able to call in and participate and be a part of the topic that we are having at that moment. Also remember to hit the subscribe button right here on the Recap channel. So once we drop a recap, you will get it as well see you watching a man until the next unstoppable recap stay strong stay motivated but most of all remain unstoppable unstoppable, unstoppable.